Okay, I think we're ready to go ahead and get started. Thank you guys so much. Standing room only back there under the carport. So those are the cheap seats back there. We do have expensive seats left up in the front, a few of them if you want to come up front. Uh, my name is Brian Swanton. I'm the Arizona Market President for Gorman & Company. Uh, we're a national real estate development group based in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, but I run their most important market here in Arizona. And, uh, yes. uh, and we specialize in affordable housing for all sorts of uh, populations. Um, but none more exciting than serving our U.S. veterans. So we're really excited to be here to cut the ribbon at Esperanza and Escalante. Um, I wanted to start by inviting Ken, one of our, our resident veterans, to come up and join us um, and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Brian. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the events from this morning uh, outside of Washington, D.C. And uh, I know we have a lot of elected officials here with us today as well. And uh, when something like that happens, uh, it really hits home in Tucson uh, really hard uh, for a lot of us on a very personal level. Um, so I can only imagine what some of the families are dealing with back there. Uh, so why don't we start with having a moment of silence uh, honoring the victims of today's tragedy. Thank you very much. Well, thank you guys all for being here. This is a very, very exciting day. I was telling uh, Ken earlier that uh, it's very rarely that I'm wowed by one of our own projects. And this is one of those projects that just gives you goosebumps. Um, it was a project I said no to, I think, uh, three or four times, Pat and, and Phyllis. And um, it, just because I didn't think it would be very competitive from a scoring perspective. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later, uh, but it ended up winning in a competition at the State Housing Department anyway, and this was just one of those projects where it's just meant to be, and I am uh, really blessed to be part of this project. Um, Pat and Phyllis, why don't you uh, come on up? I want to recognize you both. Uh, this is not uh, a Gorman project. We're a small part of the overall effort here, so I'm almost embarrassed to be the one standing on the stage today. Um, this project is really the brainchild of Esperanza and Escalante, and it's been a multi, multi-year effort, uh, starting with bond funding from the county and the donation of the land from the federal government. And um, we were brought in to do this one piece, and uh, it's been an exciting road, to say the least. Uh, but I really wanted to recognize Pat and Phyllis for their leadership from the very beginning. Let's do another one. <laughs> All right. bring that up. You're going to bring that up? Okay. So Esperanza and Escalante is really the definition of a, uh, a, a partnership. And this is a partnership that involves all three sectors of the economy, the private sector, the public sector, and the nonprofit sector. And without one of those three partners, um, this project just simply wouldn't happen. It took about 20 different entities to come together to develop these 44 units for formerly homeless veterans. And uh, this $10 million investment in Tucson uh, involved, let me just go down the list of some of our public partners, Pima County, uh, City of Tucson, the Arizona Department of Housing, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the U.S. Department of Defense and Health and Human Services, uh, the Federal Home Loan Bank of uh, Chicago, to name a few. Some of our nonprofit partners, obviously Esperanza and Escalante, uh, the nonprofit loan fund, the Tucson based Southern Arizona Loan Fund, uh, the Home Depot Foundation came through with some grant funding 
for the project, the Local Initiative Support Corporation, also known as LISC, uh, the Arizona Community Foundation and Enterprise Community Partners, all uh, nonprofit partners that had a very significant role in this development. On the private side, obviously Gorman and Company, Gorman General Contractors, Chase Bank providing our construction and permanent financing. Uh, American Express uh, was the investor through Enterprise and the tax credits. Uh, so those of you that use credit cards, use your American Express card, please. Uh, and Dunlap and McGee Property Management has done a, an amazing job getting this property leased up and operating. So those are just some of the partners that had to come together. Um, I also wanted to recognize, it's always exciting to see the final product and uh, Charles and Savannah could stand up from post across Murto. Uh, these are the designers behind the project. <laughs> Amazing Tucson-based architects who did a great job uh, working with the residents here uh, and at Esperanza as well as the Gorman team on coming up with a design that's going to work uh, for the long term. And so Corky couldn't be here, Corky Poster, many of you know. Um, he's, he sent his more attractive stand-ins, so we're happy about that. Um, but he sends his best wishes as well. I also want to thank our landscape architects, the design elements, which are a couple of college buddies of mine that keep following me around and doing my landscape architecture, and they do a great job. Uh, Cypress Civil Engineering here in Tucson, uh, Treehouse Interior Design. I saw Mary and Kurt over here uh, that did the interior work, uh, also Tucson-based. And Judy Miller, who's here, where's Judy? If you go in the community room afterwards, you'll see a whole series of prints that her and uh, Mary worked on together. And uh, Judy did the uh, preparation for those prints and really turned out excellent. So thank you, Judy, for your work there. I also wanted to call up uh, Bill Cawthon, Corey Hanks, and uh, Chad. Oh, Chad's here. Guys, come on up here. Um, you know, we stand up here and take credit and cut the ribbon, uh, but the hard work is really getting the thing built in the middle of the summer when it's 110 degrees outside. And uh, Bill, Corey, and Chad were uh, leaders on our construction team at Gorman and & Company, and they represent probably the several hundred laborers that um, worked throughout the past year on getting what's behind us built, so we want to thank our construction team. So enough uh, of me, I want to turn the podium over uh, to some of our elected officials and partners that helped pull this project together. Um, the first of which is uh, Mayor Jonathan Rothschild. Mayor Rothschild is a native Tucsonan. Is it Tucsonan? Is that how you say it? Uh, his grandmother moved to Tucson in 1942 and opened a used furniture store on South 12th Avenue. The mayor spent 30 years practicing law with the firm of Mesh, Clark, and Rothschild before running for mayor of Tucson. Mayor Rothschild came to the city hall to fulfill his promises to increase economic growth and help for Tucson's most in need, and he has a particular passion for serving our veterans as well. Um, I want to say, Mayor, on behalf of the entire city staff, uh, they were just amazing partners for us. They provided project-based subsidy. Uh, for the rental assistance on these units, uh, provided home funding through the federal home program. Uh, they processed our plans and inspects and permitted this project in an efficient way, um, even processed significant rebates uh, off of our impact fees as well because it's an affordable housing development. And so thank you uh, to the entire city uh, on behalf of the development team. Mayor Rasha. Out here. Uh, well, good morning, and uh, thank you for inviting us as elected officials, uh, uh, Supervisor Valdez, uh, Council Member Scott here today. I was out here uh, last July at the groundbreaking, uh, and it's always great to come back. It's one thing to put a shovel in dirt, it's another thing to see a project completed. And uh, although I know this has been a long time coming, uh, when you stop to think about it, if we were doing a groundbreaking last July, and here we are in June with this up. That's really a, a tribute to everybody who worked on this project to get this done as quickly as you did. So congratulations to all of you for that. Um, 
Brian touched on the fact that uh, these projects don't happen anymore unless the private, the public, and the nonprofit sectors all come together. Clearly, that's happened here. Hopefully, you can get an idea just from looking at the backdrop behind me of everybody that has to be involved today to make this happen. It doesn't happen with one sector. We've certainly in the public sector learned that. I hope we've learned that. And uh, we keep bringing folks into the table. Uh, Esperanza y Escalante uh, actually started in 1989. Next year, this property will be uh, serving our community for 25 years. Uh, this addition uh, is, is a real plus for this. Uh, it was actually started by Chapter 106 of the Vietnam Veterans of America, uh, who back in 1989 were talking about helping homeless veterans, at that time talking about helping veterans who had been on the streets for a number of years uh, after Vietnam. And the first housing unit was built here in 1993. Uh, the beauty about projects like this is they're not just bricks and mortar. They're a community. And they're a community that offers what we in government really like to see, which is wraparound services. So you can live on this property and get uh, health treatment, uh, counseling for substance abuse or uh, relapse prevention, nutrition counseling, exercise counseling and assistance. And in addition to what you get from our providers, you get to live with folks who've had much the same experience you have. And peer-to-peer -peer support that can't be replaced. So these 44 units are going to join that community and what we hope is that the people that come to live here come to live here uh, for as long as they need to be here and then integrate into our community again as uh, uh, folks who are uh, uh, full uh, giving members of our community. Uh, back, oh gee, probably 2013 now, uh, President Obama made it a priority to uh, house uh, our homeless veterans. Uh, Tucson was chosen as one of the 25 cities in which to do that. We accepted that challenge, uh, but as is often the case with the federal government now, regardless of the administration, there wasn't a whole lot of money that came with it. And uh, But what did come with it was technical support and a roadmap for bringing our community together, the nonprofit, for-profit communities and the military community to house homeless veterans. As a result of that effort, uh, as of today, we've housed over in that three-year period, uh, over 2,100 formerly uh, homeless veterans in this community. And that's a great accomplishment. But the fact of the matter is, with all that we can do in the way of social services, unless you have bricks and mortar, you're not going to be able to put people in homes. And this project behind us is just a great, great example of getting 44 more folks into homes. And so for that, I want to thank uh, Esperanza and Escalante, Gorman and Associates, and everyone else who's been involved in this project. It's a great addition to our community. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mayor for all your support every step of the way we greatly appreciate that we also are blessed to have councilwoman Shirley Scott with us today uh, representing let me just read her bio because it's pretty impressive uh, the Honorable Shirley Scott is serving her fourth term as the ward for uh, council member for this fifth term this is outdated this is probably from the groundbreaking <laughs> uh, fifth term for uh, ward four for city of Tucson uh, Mrs. Scott's passions are the quality of life for children, families, seniors, veterans, the environment, and public safety for the citizens of Tucson. 
She's also served on various committees on community sustainability. This is a highly sustainable development, as you can see, and has won multiple awards and achievements throughout her career. Uh, please join me in welcoming Ward 4 Council Member Shirley Scott. Well, first of all, congratulations to all of you who made this last piece or this next piece happen. And I also want to take a moment to salute and thank all the veterans who have served our country. Um, if without you, we would not be as safe as we are today. So I do support veterans, and I do support you, and thank you very much for your service. I was first elected and took office in December of 1995, in the last century. And right after I was elected, and shortly thereafter, there was a very nice lady who came to my office and said, I want you to know about Esperanza and Escalante. So Betty Slaybaugh is a name you all know very well, and she was at my door and said, we really need you to know more about who we are and what we do. And so I was very much on board, and I was very encouraging uh, when we were di dividing up the, the community development block grants. I was saying that we must make sure that Esperanza and Escalante was funded if it is all possible. The weaning out of uh, projects from $21 million needs down to $7 million uh, availability of money is a hard thing to do. But Esperanza and Escalante has been on the forefront of our CDBG um, grants. And also my particular office offered money at one point that we had available in the good old days, Mr. Mayor, when we actually had money available, um, which is getting slimmer and harder to find these days, no matter what level. But that's thanks to uh, that money that was available to my office that I contributed to some of the landscaping and the sidewalks that are out there today. Um, I have always been very happy to give any and all kinds of support for this project. It's very well needed. And the city of Tucson also has complimentary homeless programs that have recently been started that you may know about. And we're very proud of how that's working. But this is very good because it's located here. Um, most people who have services and needs have to go out of this area that I call Ward 4, 100 square miles. They have to go out of this area in order to get some of the services that might be available aplenty elsewhere. So I'm very happy that this particular location is here on this side of town and uh, getting, giving people the opportunities to be served here. You have to think carefully about the miracle that this really is federal government, the state government, the county, the city, private, and nonprofits working together. That's kind of a miracle. And I think we should all take note of that, that when we really have a good cause, we do work together and we work well together. And so with those words, I thank you and again, Thank those for their service, and thanks and congratulations to those who helped make this a dream come true. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Shirley was asking me what's the most difficult part of pulling this project together, and you would think it would be all of those partners coming together as one. That was the easy part, quite frankly. When we rally around veteran needs, everyone was asking how can we help and how can we be a part of this project. So uh, it wasn't herding cats at all. It was uh, walking dogs, maybe. I don't know. Uh, it was, uh, that was really the easy part, getting all the partners together because uh, everyone had the same mission in mind and that was a, a great thing. So thank you very much. Our third speaker today, uh, mentioning the county, uh, the county uh, can take claim as one of the first dollars in, really, uh, in the early infrastructure improvements. This land was donated to Esperanza by the federal government, um, but land by itself is great, but it costs a lot of money to invest in the infrastructure to get it ready for development. And um, so the county, Pima County, uh, came in with some bond funding and uh, I highly encourage the city and the county, next time you have a bond election, let's get it right and get it passed, because we need those dollars. 
and uh, those dollars really helped invest in some of the streets, the underground utilities, um, all the dirty stuff that has to take place to get a site like this ready for development. Um, so our next speaker is Ramon Valadez, who's a Pima County Board of Supervisors uh, on District 2. Uh, he's a lifelong resident of Pima County and a graduate of uh, Northern Nogales University, no, University of Arizona, I'm sorry. They didn't teach me to read while at ASU, I'm sorry. I messed that up. Uh, I couldn't help myself. Ramon is the immediate past chair of the Pima County Board of Supervisors. Uh, having served in that capacity from January 2010 all the way through January 2014. He served on the board uh, representing District 2 since 2003, and he's focused much of his time on the issues affecting children and youth in important areas of education, homelessness, crime prevention, and health care, as well as veteran issues. So please uh, join me in welcoming Board of Supervisors from District 2, Ramon Valdez. Good morning. You know, I was just telling my friend over here that, uh, you know what, I forgive them. They don't teach them to read at ASU. <laughs> you know, Shirley and I were looking uh, around right now, uh, and she was elected in 1995. I was elected to the State House of Representatives in 1996. Shortly thereafter, like you, I got a call from Betty Slabaugh. And she invited us remember, to the dedication, and, and we're trying to remember the year. I know I was in the house, but I don't remember the exact year. When they dedicated the first set of four plexes here at Esperanza and Escalante. And I remember thinking, wow, what a great project. I think we may both mentioned it during our comments back then, too. And you know what it led to was it led an, in uh, an interest to uh, myself and several others on affordable housing. And as an indirect result of being here when we first got elected, uh, myself and the late uh, Speaker of the House, uh, J uh, Jake Flake, uh, created the state of the Arizona Housing Department. So understand that little things would have great impacts uh, because at the time we didn't have a state housing department. You know, both the mayor and Shirley talked about the importance of partnerships. Uh, and frankly, today, the bigger, the more important the project, the more necessary it is to have partnerships. We were glad to be able to step up through the 2004 bond program and, uh, and put forward a million dollars for the infrastructure here. And uh, after talking to Marcos, I realized that we leveraged that $1 million almost to exceed a 1 to 10 match of your monies as Pima County taxpayers. So 1 to 10 match, I don't know, that's, that's pretty good, isn't it, Marcos? So the truth is, though, that what we're serving is fitting that we're cutting the ribbon today on Flag Day. How many of you remember it's Flag Day today? Good, this is a great and educated crowd. You know, it's fitting that it's a Flag Day for two reasons. First of all, because the veterans that are going to be served by this project guarantee the freedoms that we enjoy today and continue to enjoy. But if you look at the name of this, Esperanza en Escalante, we look at, obviously it's on Escalante, but Esperanza. Esperanza means hope. These are the people that guarantee our freedom that we continue to enjoy. Let's guarantee that they have the hope in their life to make their life better. So thank you everyone who has something to do with this project and uh, congratulations. Could have been a lot meaner to me. He was kind of nice. Hope. <laughs> There's hope for me too. Right? So um, I'd, I'd also like to have Marcos come on up. Uh, Marcos Ismael was with the Pima County Housing and Community Development, and Marcos played a real critical role. Like I said, very early on in this project, um, and uh, went through a lot of difficult times um, prior to us, and then with us as we had to work through all the legal documents, subordinations, and all the attorneys, and uh, complicated nature of low-income housing tax credit financing. And Marcos helped us uh, navigate through the county process every step of the way, 
and really made my job a lot easier. So I want to welcome up uh, Marcos Ismael to say for you. Good morning. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for inviting us, uh, Gorman and Company, Esperanza and Escalante. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Thank you to all the veterans for your service. Um, proud to be involved in a project that, that's able to give back to those who proudly serve their country. Um, and, you know, getting back to that, uh, I'm probably the person most responsible for this project, Betty Slabaugh, uh, came to us, I believe, probably in 2007, uh, knocking on our door um, for funding for this project. And I believe she was also involved with our department prior to that, um, unselfishly serving as a uh, advisory member for 1997 housing bond funds. So she knew about our housing bond program, and you know when they uh, when they came to the point where they had a um, master development plan to put infrastructure in here, um, you know they realized that's the hardest piece of any project to fund. Uh, but she also realized we had funds could, that could do that, um, and so we said, yeah. Sure, no problem. But I think none of us realized how difficult it was going to be to put all the pieces together once the uh, county decided to contribute funding to the project. And um, that happened formally by the Board of Supervisors' approval in 2012. Um, you know, and, and, and Betty, I think we approved, our Housing Commission approved funding in 2008, 2009, somewhere in there, it was about three and a half years to get a contract, and um, largely due to negotiations with federal government and uh, legal documents that uh, that were being required by all parties. But um, once we got that, um, you know, I remember our attorney saying, "Yay, we're done." And, and then in 2015, Brian came back and said, "Hey, guess what? <laughs> we got those tax credits you wanted us to get." Um, because part of our agreement was uh, to invest the funds predicated on future development and attracting an, uh, additional investments to build the houses here. And, um, and so we were kind of out on a limb uh, for a while on our investment until um, uh, Gorman and Company came into the picture working with Esperanza and were able to uh, be, uh, uh, submit an application for tax credits. And in order to do that requires uh, a lot of uh, letters of support, and um, and so that's when they came to us again in 2015, and um, you know we went back to our attorneys and said, guess what, <laughs> they're back. But um, I think everyone can agree that it's a, been a great investment of our time and effort, a great investment uh, of our public funds, uh, both federal and local public funds, um, and and public funds approved by the voters as well. So um, again. On behalf of the county, uh, thanks to the Board of Supervisors for uh, for their efforts, uh, both in 2000 and um, 2012, and actually uh, 2008, 2012, and 2015, <laughs> to uh, to be able to you know make the investment to leverage um, this type of a project. Uh, so thanks again to everybody. Thanks to all the veterans, and and um, hope we all enjoy carrying the project. As many of you know, this project is about affordable housing. It's also about homelessness and solving that issue. Uh, we do have two special guests I just wanted to point out. Joan Service with the uh, Homeless Coalition. And the Arizona Coalition to End Homelessness is, was the official title. And Val Iverson, who's with the Arizona Housing Alliance. Uh, these are the only two statewide advocacy organizations uh, to address both affordable housing issues in the state and homeless issues in the state. What's very exciting is I had a chance to serve on the board, the chair of the board for about three years on the affordable housing side. Uh, these two entities are officially merging uh, into one bigger, better statewide organization to uh, solve both housing and homeless issues. And the new name of the entity is the Arizona Housing Coalition, and um, it's going to be several hundred, almost a thousand members strong when we get done with it, I hope. 
And um, so I encourage you, if you're interested in housing and homeless issues, talk to Joan and Val uh, while you are here about this exciting new organization. Um, our next speaker um, is, I call him Mr. Moneybags. You know. yeah. It's, uh, if this is a $9 million project, uh, about seven and a half million of it came through the Arizona Department of Housing. Uh, these tax credits uh, are critically important and it really finances a lion's share of the development costs on these developments. But it's a limited resource and the state has to allocate very carefully on a very competitive basis where these dollars go, where these tax credits go and uh, a project like this um, didn't really compete well from a pure score perspective, but the state recognized um, that solving the homeless issue through affordable housing was very important, so they crafted out a special set aside for supportive housing projects for chronically homeless uh, populations. And because of that, this project sort of snuck in and got funded even though it did have a low score. Uh, but it was because of that public policy decision on behalf of the state housing department uh, that made this possible. So I want to um, invite up Andrew Rael, who's the deputy uh, director for the Arizona Department of Housing and a good friend. I've known Andrew for well over 20 years, and he's been a passionate supporter of affordable housing in the state for a very long time. So, Andrew. Good morning, and uh, on behalf of everybody from the Arizona Department of Housing, I would like to say thank you and congratulations uh, for the completion of this very important and wonderful project. Um, I would like to thank the team, uh, Gorman, the developer, uh, Esperanza and Escalante, the service provider, the city of Tucson that provided funding and a very important uh, rental assistance that this project requires to operate. Pima County and the Department of Health and Human Services. And as Brian said, there are 20 partners or so, uh, and I don't know all of them, he mentioned them, but uh, I think the point is that a project like this is very difficult and it takes a lot of resources and it takes a lot of partnerships. Um, as Brian said, the Arizona Department of Housing prioritizes in our qualified allocation plan for the allocation of the 9% tax credits. We prioritize uh, housing for permanent supportive housing for chronically homeless persons and in this case, a preference for veterans. Um, by prioritizing that type of housing, uh, you can submit an application and have a very good chance of getting funded because there's, it's a set aside. So we're always gonna we're always gonna fund two or three permanent supportive uh, housing projects for chronic homeless. So as Brian said, he. Gorman received an allocation of 9% tax credits. That is both a blessing and a curse. And, and, and the reason is, is because projects like this don't bring in a lot of money and they're very expensive to operate. And it takes all of the partners that we talked about today to make them work. And not only putting that partnership together, but keeping it together, not only for the construction, but the operation for 30 years. So this is a big deal. And and I've mentioned the partners. Uh, these are very dedicated partners. Um, we are dedicated to affordable housing. Otherwise, we wouldn't take on these impossible tasks. And so uh, it's hard work, but as with a lot of things, hard work is worth a lot. I mean, it pays off, and in this case, we get to give back to a veteran population that gives so much to us. And with that, I want to thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, our final speaker today, I wanted to save this gentleman for last on purpose, uh, because this project really belongs to Esperanza and Escalante. And Dan Anderson uh, has faithfully served as chairman of the board 
<coughs> for Esperanza, uh, an organization that plays a critical role in assisting chronically homeless veterans with housing, health, and wellness, and other support services. This project simply wouldn't be possible without the hard work of Dan and the entire organization. And Dan, you've got an amazing staff here, uh, Pat and Phyllis and their whole team. And uh, they've just, every time we ask for anything, it gets done, and it gets done immediately. And uh, it's, it's just been a remarkable uh, partnership to have. So Dan, why don't you come on up and say a few words. said is he's given me too much credit. The credit really goes to Pat and Phyllis and all of the staff and the people that have done all the really hard work here. I just want to close by uh, point, pointing out uh, two concepts that I was thinking about this morning. First concept we usually hear in the phrase, it takes a village, as in it takes a village to raise a child, for example. But if you think about it, it really takes a village to do just about everything you do. Um, the other concept is, as we were reminded this morning from the news, we live in a very dangerous world. We have always lived in a very dangerous world. And there have always been the men and women who stood up between us and that danger. Uh, they put their lives, they put their bodies at risk uh, so that uh, we could be safer. Uh, this is an example of the village giving back to those people who stood up for us and who served us. And uh, I think we should all be very proud to be part of this, of this effort. So thank you very much for coming. It's been a terrific, this is amazing. When I first uh, got involved with Esperanza and Escalante uh, a number of years ago, uh, this sort of looked like a little dirt lot, sort of looked like old Tucson uh, without the fences. And, and, uh, and, I've, and I've watched it grow, and I've watched the, the hard work that Pat and Phyllis have put in, the staff, uh, the, the incredible, intricate, you can't imagine, I go to these board meetings, and Pat would come with these reports about how this was all coming together. I couldn't keep track of it. Uh, this agency, that agency, we talked to this person, that person, we had a low score, uh, and then somehow or another we got through, and somehow or another this all came together. Uh, there was a, a sort of a magic thing that always happened with Betty Slayball, uh, who she, along with uh, John Jones, who's standing shyly under the tree with the name we had over there, uh, since the beginning, um, somehow or another they just believed in this and that it would all come together, and, uh, and so far we've served a lot of veterans, uh, and uh, and now we've gone to uh, permanent supportive housing. This is the delight. So thank you all very much. And I have to echo that, John Jones. Uh, I was introduced to Mr. Jones by Corky Poster early on in the process. And I said, who is this guy? And he says, he's a guy if you need anything done, you go to. And I said, okay. And sure enough, I did that, and I went to him a lot, and he got everything done that I ever asked him to get done, so uh, on a volunteer basis, too. So thank you so much, uh, John, for your help uh, throughout the process. Thanks a lot. Okay, now the fun part. We're all done with the speeches. Uh, the nice thing about a ribbon cutting is that you don't run out of shovels, okay? So there's plenty of room behind that ribbon. I would like all of our speakers to uh, take center stage behind the ribbon behind us. Uh, but if you feel like you've been part of this project and you want your uh, your face in that photo, get in there because there's plenty of room and there's been so many partners and we'll take lots of pictures um, uh, to make sure everyone gets their shot. So I'd like to have Pat and Phyllis for sure, any board members um, and all of our speakers to join us behind me. And then we do have a couple of units. We have two units available for you to tour today. And they have balloons leading to them, so you can easily see where those units are. And uh, there's food in the community room behind us as well, so enjoy your walk around the property, and thanks for coming. Can you hear us out there? No. <laughs> All right, let's just go ahead and do this. We'll count what we'll do. We'll do the three, two, one. You ready? Three, two, one. Yay.